There's definitely a lot of progress in making implants and like the um, you know bone mimetic structures or things like that. Um, but that's not necessarily the exciting part um, as far as I'm concerned. I think the exciting um, things are a little bit more futuristic, which is kind of building tissues that are 3D printed, not necessarily devices. Um, so being able to put the cells and the architecture together to be able to um, control um, um, how these things form tissues. So that's really, I think, you know, and there's a field called bioprinting where the idea is to put cells and these gel materials and then be able to deposit them so that the different cells are in different parts of this structure and they start reorganizing themselves into tissues that have blood vessels and maybe even um, nervous tissue and other things and actually can function. So I, I don't know if you saw this um, uh, TV series, Westworld, where you know actually the opening is almost 3D printing um, a tissue. Um, and so that's the idea, to be able to 3D print um, functional tissues that have many different components and many different cell types and can get integrated into into the body. Tissues are complex so we want to definitely have different cell types in the 3D printed tissues. So probably the easiest way to actually print the different cell types um, as opposed to just print one cell type and wait for it to differentiate to the different cell types. So there are more and more of these what they call multi-material printers so that they can print different materials and different cells um, so that you can actually generate the complexity of the tissue as you're printing it. So right now I think there's a lot of um, work in trying to print structures that can remodel over time uh, um, and go from a primitive state um, that cells are not fully mature and inter interconnected to a more mature uh, structure. Um, there's definitely a lot of work on trying to make the ink better so that the materials that are used to do this 3D printing can um, both biologically provide the right signals to the cells, mechanically have the right um, mechanical properties, um, and have the right degradation property over time so that as the tissue is formed, it goes away. So there's a lot of work on trying to build these inks and also better 3D printers that are designed for um, printing the right cells and materials. I think the first applications of this bioprinting will be to print tissues for testing things outside of the body. So that I think is already um, coming along. So printing mini hearts and livers and things like that for drug testing or um, figuring out um, um, how to generate the right kind of therapy for particular people. So those are, I think, what we're going to see first. Um, the goal is to reduce the number of failed drugs that are going to late stages. Um, and if that happens, then you can definitely um, reduce the costs significantly. Um, and then the other thing is that um, it allows us to potentially make things faster because then you're more comfortable with uh, the outcome and you don't need to um, spend as much time maybe with um, large-scale clinical testing or all that stuff. You can um, do more uh, early on testing and less um, in large clinical testing. Transplantation is, I think, it's still um, a little bit uh, off in the future. With this kinds of platforms, um, down the road you will be able to have models of each person potentially and once you have enough understanding of how different people behave because you can link these tissue behaviors to the person's genomes so then once you have enough of this validation then you can start actually maybe even not using these models but just use the genomes and the understanding of the how the different people respond uh, based on uh, the models that you've been making to um, test things. So we actually have um, programs in which we're trying to 
do these kinds of testing and then feed it into machine learning algorithms to be able to have more predictiveness um, um, so that we can even eliminate these kinds of testings down the road.